Good biblical morning. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good biblical morning. Welcome back to Bible read along Bible read along Bible read along get the word of God. Okay. Um but that's it. Welcome to Bible Read Along. What do we do here? We take one chapter of scripture. Today's chapter is I'm pointing the wrong way. Where am I pointing here? This way. Romans 13. Today is Romans chapter 13. We are reading that together in the NIV version. Grab a Bible, grab a pen, grab a highlighter. Read along with us. Um, please feel free to comment. I'm just trying to fix the comments so I can actually share them with everyone. Because right now that's not happening. But uh, grab a Bible, grab a pen, highlighter, read along with us it is called bible read along grab some dirty bean water if that's what you like um i'm drinking water today high quality h2o see through h2o when i move over here that's some high quality h2o right there okay no don't imitate water boy right now just do <laughs> no imitations um my name's daniel I love Jesus. He has changed my life and love the word of God. I love sharing it with others. I believe that is what I am called to do. So I am committed to do it, committed to be here and share it. I'm here with my wife, Ashley. Hi. You can't see her, but hello. And uh, she also loves Jesus. And I know we have a bunch of people here as well that love Jesus. Let's see if this will... If we can get this working this morning, I try so hard. It's just not the same with one hand. I'm a little bit slower. But uh, morning, Matthew from Kelowna, British Columbia. So glad you have joined us once again. Good morning to Rachel. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Matthew, thank you. You said you enjoyed Home Church Celebrate Recovery last night. It was great to have you. Uh, that is available on Bible Read Along as well, and so you can check that out. Uh, we posted last night, we do a live, not a live service, an online service every week. I got to learn to switch what I'm saying there. We watch the same thing online. But guys. the online is the exact same thing as what we are doing in person, um, for the most part. I mean, there's, you know, there's some changes. Let me tell you, I shouldn't say it's the exact same, because in person is just a whole nother level. And if you are ever in the Red Deer area, we invite you to join us for Celebrate Recovery at Home Church Red Deer every Tuesday night. Um, we have a lot of people that do both Bible Read Along and Celebrate Recovery because we just, when you love recovery, if you're committed to moving your life forward, usually that involves the Word of God. And so, welcome. Good morning, Mike. Morning, Jesse. From Louisiana, we haven't seen you in a while. Glad you are here. Okay, let's pray and let's get into the Word of God. Today is Romans chapter 13. This is going to be a fun one, especially, it's a short chapter, but especially with everything that's going on in the world today. Um, I actually, last week, I was in some debates about Romans 13. And because in case you haven't noticed, I love to debate things online. I like to be involved in some hot topic conversations. And so I did. And, and in person. And in person. With my children. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, you know, and that's just, I love not only, I'm not just trying to prove my point and prove what I know. I really like to hear other points of view. But I also know usually the point of view that most people have is not correct. So I like to kind of make them challenge them, especially Ashley's kids, her daughter, especially to think and go, okay, this is what you, you think. This is what you're believing, but I'm going to challenge you. Let's she's think. She's believing what she's being told Let's, in school. Oh, she's being spoon fed some stuff that is just not, not right at all. Um, but let's pray. Let's get in the word. And today, Romans 13, talking about submission to governing authorities. So... Here we go. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. That's the best prayer I can pray sometimes. Lord, help me. Thank you for your word. Thank you for what you're doing. 
thank you, God, for us learning it. We and the hunger in our hearts. We want to know you. We want to know your word more. Mm -hmm. So bring life to us today. Help us to be Bible based, Christ centered, spirit filled Christians that live out on purpose for you. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. All right. Sorry. Mine. I'm going to mute for a second. All right. That's another hard thing, blowing your nose with one hand. Oh, blowing, learn, try, if you want to try something one day, try blowing your nose with one hand. Like, not the other hand, just do it with one hand. That, that'll that throw you off and you suddenly realize, wow, this is, this is difficult. Socks, try putting socks on with only one hand, not your other hand helping you. Try put socks on. And I, I have it. To help, by the way, I'm not just making She help. She things. offers, she's helped. I'm just highly independent and highly I'm independent and um, stubborn a little bit and I want to <laughs> challenge myself okay stubborn a lot but challenging myself to just do things too because I didn't want this to become oh I had an accident I can't do anything even today I was thinking you know my mindset isn't what can't I do my mindset is actually, wow, look at how much I can do with one hand. I, sh I should have that mindset when I'm working out, actually. So, I probably feel better about it. Not thinking, yeah. oh, I can't do this move. I can't do this move. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing what that mindset and I can. Look what I can. Thankful that I can yeah. instead of what I can't. Yeah, that's not nearly a comparison to losing fingers. Sorry. No, but in any, <laughs> and that's in anything. Obviously, for me, this was a, you know, a, a hard accident, but... Um, and by the way, those that don't know, I, I actually, so I'm doing really good. Hand is healing really well. They're going to change this splint soon. Um, things are good. Things are healing. I almost six weeks ago, almost eight weeks ago, February 24th, I was in an accident. I actually severed all four of my fingers. They've reattached them and they are healing well. So that's God. that's where I'm at. And I'm just thankful for what God's doing. I still got a long road ahead, but thankful each and every day. All right, are you ready? Let's go to the Bible. Ah, see, now we're literally inside the Bible. Look at, look at me. I'm in the, help, help. I'm in the Bible. <laughs> help me out. Okay. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. We're reading from the NIV. Submission to governing authorities. So now, Paul has talked about Jew, Gentile, were made righteous through faith. Really, the whole point of this has been everyone is a sinner. Everyone needs Jesus. And it doesn't matter what family you're born into. It doesn't matter what... Um, uh, culture you're born into what religion you're born into you need jesus and everyone no one is exempt and we have to receive the gift of god by faith and faith requires some actions and so we have to receive it we have to believe it we have to live it out romans 12 was kind of the the tipping point of now how do we start living this out and so today we are into submission to governing authorities Submission. We've talked about that word many times. We're going to re-talk about it here in a minute. Verse 1. Let everyone be subject to governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So does that mean Trudeau is in power because God put him there? Well, we're going to talk. No. Is, is Trudeau in power? Is Biden in power? Was Trump in power? Is Putin in power? Is, you know, um, all of these people in power? Kim Jong-un, are they in power because God put them there? We are going to talk yeah, about this. Um, I've been hearing so much of this scripture out of context in the last little while, but we're going to get into that. Let's, let's read a few more verses here. Whoever rebels, rebels against authority is rebelling against what God's instituted for those who do so will bring judgment on themselves for rulers hold no terror for those who do right, 
but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. For, now this is important, this is often the context verse that nobody reads. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is why you pay taxes for the authorities or God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then pay revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Okay. I, that last part. I, I actually agree to all of this when we read it in context because I have been seeing, uh, I'm on a lot of the political debates. Um, I, I messaged actually and tagged yesterday on Facebook our premier here in um, Alberta, you know, Jason Kenney, our, our premier, um, that would be like in the States, that would be like a governor of the state. Um, so he, I, he, here's the thing, submission. Submission we've talked about means come under the mission. Does that mean we are to come under every mission? No, it does not. We come under godly mission. And a lot of Christians right now have been using this verse. Let everyone subject to governing authorities. Be subject. You have to just do what they say. Just be, just ba ba, just ba. Um, <laughs> instead, this is not what this is talking about. This is actually talking about God puts people in place um, to bring judgment of right and wrong. Now, what if those leaders are not doing what's right and wrong? Now, before we even get there, deeper context here, who is Paul talking to? Paul is talking to the group of Jews and Gentiles that are turning to Christianity in Rome. The, he, so there, there's this specific, specific message to specific people at a specific time. Sometimes we take, well, it's in the Bible, so it must be for everyone. No, there are principles we can learn. There are values we can learn. There are sometimes rules and authority that now go forever. The Great Commission, Jesus said, therefore go. He said that to specific people at a specific time. However, that message is to all Christians of all time. Go and teach and train and do these things. Paul is... So was Paul saying that they should be under the Roman rule? So Paul is... is well, Paul is just saying a certain thing to certain people. And so right now they're in Rome. They're de I mean, Paul was in Roman prisons. So does that mean Paul submitted to Roman authorities? No, he wouldn't be in Roman prisons if he had obeyed Roman laws. He, the disciples wouldn't have been martyred, which all of them were, except for one, I believe. And even John, he was sent to the island of Patmos to die there. And, you know, so there, almost all the disciples, the 12 disciples were martyred. Um, the apostles, the early church was martyred. Like, you don't be martyred. The, the government doesn't come kill you if you're obeying what they say. Jesus himself was arrested and portrayed. And, you know, now he had done nothing wrong, the Bible says. But there was the Pharisees, the leaders of the religious world at that time said, stop, stop preaching, stop healing on the Sabbath, stop... He didn't do it. So we, we have to look at the greater context of scripture here. That this is not just a do whatever an authority says without any questioning, without any thoughts, without any um, critical thinking. Or you'll end up like my daughter, believing whatever her science or you, tells her. Yeah, there, she's believing. So Ashley's daughter, you know, I don't know if she can hear us. She might be having breakfast right now, but... Mm -hmm. Um, she's, she's in grade nine, great girl, smart girl, but she's, she comes up and she brings up sometimes just tops. Did you know that we came from fish and we, you know, and I'm like, no, 
Let's think about this critically. I'm not even going to throw creation at you. I'm not going to, this is what I believe and you should believe this. That's not how our conversations go. Our conversations actually go, okay, if that is true, why don't we see X, Y, Z? And then she think, well, I don't know. I'll go ask my teacher. Yeah, but species can't change from one species to another. Well, dogs, you know, came from wolves. And I'm like, that's the same species. Show me an example of one species. You know, so we get into these, we get into these conversations. Now, submitting to governing authorities. Number one, submission is to God. We come under the mission. Now, what happens if godly authority is, is what happens if authority is not on godly mission? So let's look through this again. I'm going to dig into this a bit because I think this highly impacts our world today. What does happen? Um, hmm? what does happen? So what does happen? So let's, let's look at the scriptures here again for a little bit. So submit to everyone. God establishes it. That could mean God establishes the position, not always the person. Did God establish kings and rulers? And yes, God is the king of kings and lord of lords. So maybe he, 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 he establishes a position of authority. Let me say it this way with police. Police authority is, is, deserves respect. They deserve our honor. Now, is there some bad cops out there doing bad things? Absolutely. So should we respect that person for what they're doing? absolutely not we need to bring justice and righteousness and this is again that establishment we have to realize paul's speaking to in rome when they were waiting for the messiah they were expecting a messiah to come overthrow the roman government so that they would be free and could be be the people of the messiah Instead, Jesus came and he didn't overthrow the, the government because he said, my kingdom is not of this earth. I, our father in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done. So there's a different kingdom. There's a different realm that takes place here. So he's trying to remind them this isn't about overthrow the government. Let's be zealots. Let's revolt. Let's submit to them when it's godly submission. Now, punishment. Let's talk about the punishment here. Because one police officer is not and that's right so one abuse of authority doesn't mean so all authority is bad people. you know oh There's we that you don't think is right. we had one bad president one bad prime minister man they're ruining the country whoever it is you pick your side i don't care to be honest um uh whoever it is but there's does that mean we should never have a a government leader again because this one abused it no government leaders so there might be for god has it says right here verse two still rebelling against what god has instituted the institution of the position of so that's how i take this i could be wrong even if you don't take it that way that you go no every authority is submitted by god well let's keep reading and then i want to throw some history at you to go is that really true um for those, if you don't submit to them, you will bring judgment on yourselves. Now, this judgment, if you look into it, doesn't necessarily mean from God. It means that if you do wrong, if you're speeding and the police pull you over, they can give you a ticket. Does that mean it's a bad cop? That bad cop. I'm under spiritual attack. You wrote the law. So if you do something wrong, they can punish you. Um, and at Rome at that time, you know, if you did something that they didn't like, murder, insurrection rebellion they could put you to death which is what the charges they brought against jesus inciting rebellion and these were the actual charges that rome had to go on you think paul wrote this letter at this time because he was in roman prison and he's basically giving a warning like this is what will happen to you if you don't yeah and so paul's she just said is paul writing this because he's in prison and giving a warning possibly and he also, Paul was given so much freedoms in prison. We, we read of his prison time and it was like, he wasn't in a jail in the sense of there was times, you know, Acts 16 and others where he's locked up hand and key and in the lowest jail and in the inner prison and, you know, their guards and the jail doors. Then there's times in Rome that he's in prison and he's walking around freely having friends over. They're writing these letters and they're doing, you know, discussions and he's meeting with Cornelius and he's having all of these things to, to do these things. Um, anyways, let's keep going because otherwise we will never get through this chapter. But I really, I'm just passionate about this right now because 
I'm seeing so many Christians just going, we're supposed to obey the government no matter what. And that's not what the Bible says at all. Um, do you fear the one in authority? Do what is right and you will be condemned for the one in authority. God's servant is good for you. God's servant. If the authority is under God's servant, we are submitting to them. If they are not God's servant, are we to submit to them? This that's is a kind of what Tia's comment. Is it? This is what we really have to question to ourselves. What's... Obey the government until the government asks you to disobey God. Yes, and that's where we have right now a lot of debates. Well, they haven't really, you know, the governments are not really opposing church. We can still worship. We can still read the Bible online. We can still gather. Sure. And if that's where your conviction is, okay. Um, should we be also standing up and fighting and going, you know what? It is not right. Like we have been given our countries under godly leadership, not perfect men, but under people that tried to bring freedom, established the charter of rights in Canada and, um, the, the, uh, what is it in the States? I can't remember right now. Um, the amendments, first the amendment, the declaration of independence, and it, there's a few of them, but, um, to pr promote gathering together, godly worship that we're allowed to, we're allowed certain things given from God that the government cannot take away from us. So anyways, let's, uh, I want to talk about history for just a second. If we are to submit to all authority, let's go, let's go back in history here i want to remember them the ones i've studied because there's a few more recent ones but let's go back to america finding independence they left england to find a country where they could have religious freedom that's why they left they were being oppressed there was they were not allowed to worship they were not they had to be a certain way the church had to be a certain way um they left that was that right or wrong did they do good or bad by disobeying their government because if we're saying, no, if you disobey your government, you're, you're evil, then they were evil and modern Christianity in the Western world is, is evil. If, let's go a little bit further in, in a little closer in history. <clears throat> let's go to um, slavery. Was it right or wrong? It was legal to own slaves. That was the law. But was it right or wrong? And people stood up and said, this is wrong. We can't have this. They did not submit to the authority, but they did what was right. So were they doing right or wrong? Was it more important that they submit to the law or more important to do what's right and wrong? We have to look at this in context. Now, next last one I'm going to do. <laughs> Excuse me. Hitler, Nazi Germany and the Jews. It was, it, it was your law required duty to report Jews and not hide them and not. But then we have people that went against that and hid the Jews, snuck people out, Schindler's List and, you know, things that happened that helped save hundreds and even thousands of Jews and other cultures. But saving, you know, saving these people, did they do what was right or wrong? They disobeyed the law, but they obeyed God. There's some questions for you to think at and go, uh-oh. Maybe I'm looking at this verse out of context because we can't, we can't go, you must obey all authority and it, you have to just obey, but at the same time, highlight and, and do these heroes of faith and things that go, wow, they stood up against the, even the apostles, as we talked about, stood up, quit preaching Jesus, quit preaching Jesus, quit. Pre no, Paul, Peter said, we are not going to stop preaching Jesus. Throw us in prison again. That's fine. We're going to, we are going to keep doing what God has called us to do. So there's submitting to authority. I believe, so to sum it up, I believe God institutes positions of authority. I believe we elect authority. And unfortunately, because human nature is evil and wicked, we elect evil and wicked people. Um, especially in democracies. I believe authority, the position is by God, not always the person is by God. I don't believe that we just submit to all authority blindly. I believe we submit, come under submission, under the mission of God. And if they are not honoring the mission of God, we have to do what's right. I believe that government and authorities, you have to be aware though, if you disobey, there could be punishment. 
And is it worth that punishment to disobey? I would rather obey God than, than punishment than uh, disobey. So there, there's that. So let's go to the last. So then would you rather not wear a mask? Than to come under the law? Okay, so now she just, she asked, she asked what's part of the debate right now. Should you wear a mask then or shouldn't you? Listen, here's my perspective again. Wearing a mask, I don't like it. I don't like to wear a mask. But I do it, why? Because there's authorities in place that can bring judgment against that. I could, you know, I, I'm, I could be refused to shop at certain places. I could be refused, that's their right. I could actually, there could be, now there comes a time though where you go, this isn't right what the government's doing. And it's not that I think we should just not wear masks and I'm not an anti-masker. I, I think that... I, what is scaring me right now, anti-authoritarianism is what she just said. And I agree because what scares me right now is that we just do what the government says without hearing both sides of a debate and that we can make our own informed decisions as human beings. That's what I think. So is the mask thing, do I feel, oh, we're being oppressed? No, I, I think it's stupid. I don't think it's working as much as they would like. I don't think there's the medical evidence for masks or two masks or three masks. And maybe you're leaving Bible read along now because I'm getting into this. I'm sorry. We got to talk about this stuff because it's impacting our world. Do I put on a mask? Yes, I have one in the car and I'll put one on if people ask. In the hospital, every time I left my room, I had to put on a mask. I just did it. It's not that that wasn't an imposing on me, but I'm aware that that is a symbol and maybe first steps towards further control that I don't think is godly. So take that how it will. Love. Let's talk about love for a minute here because, again, we got to read this in context. So love fulfills the law. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Time out for a minute. Throw in the comments. I would love to chat with you later. We might not get into a big debate right now because I am almost out of time here, I think. Um, yep. Um, but throw it in the comments. And if you would love a personal conversation later, I would talk to you about some of my thoughts and things on this. Um, about all of the, the things that we're facing in the world today. And, and yeah, that's, that's all I'm going to say. Love, love... Love, <laughs> let no debt remain outstanding except the continued debt to love one another for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Remember, we're talking about submission to law. Commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Now, here's... So then isn't it love for us to put our mask on? And here's the other debate. Now, if we're going to do the mask thing again, you're loving your neighbor by putting on your mask. Okay. And let me say it this way. My mom, who watches this... Hi, mom. Love you. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, she just came through cancer, beat cancer. And, uh, you know her immune system is compromised. I love my mom. If we were to go visit my mom, which we can't even right now with travel restrictions, um, if I was to go visit my mom, I would ask her, do you want me to put a mask on? I probably would just to, in their home anyways, because I'm her immune system is, is weak. It's compromised. Is that showing love? Yes. Does that mean we should always wear a mask because it's loving? No. Um, the other side of the argument, let's look at those. People that are anti-mask and standing on the street corners, even here in Red Deer, and there's rallies every Saturday that are like, we are against this, we're against this government, tyranny, and er, er, er. Um, they believe they are showing love to you and others by standing up for your rights and freedoms. So who's actually showing love? Both... I believe both camps are trying to do this out of love. It just depends on your heart condition. It just depends on your heart and your understanding of it. And some people go, You don't just join a riot because you want to be part of a riot. 
riot. That's right. Rally. Rally. Yeah, you don't join a rally just to, you know, oh, I'll just be here. But again, back to Ashley's daughter. Sorry, I'm all over the place today. This is a short chapter that is just huge right now because it's impacting our, our world. Um, let's go back to Ashley's daughter. She just is receiving what she's being fed and believes it to be true. So she acts out of what she believes to be true. I believe that's what's happening in our world. And because it's from her teacher, who she believes. It's from a source she believes. So and it's the same with people in the government. We believe the government is put there because, you know, they earned their place there. That's right. So why won't we believe that? So we believe government. We believe authorities. We believe certain news stations. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't watch that one because they don't believe what I believe. We like to watch things that line up with our beliefs and reestablish re what we believe. So, but here's, here's where Lee... I don't care what news source you listen to. I don't care what government you think is right, wrong. Let's come back to the Bible where we go, I'm going to show love. And maybe if you are showing love differently than how I would show love, guess what? I still have to show you love. Unfortunately, what happens is this. Well, if you're not showing love in the same way that I think is the right way to show love, then you're not loving. No, this isn't about division. Can you love someone who has a different opinion than you? Or a different love language. Can you love someone that has a different response to the government right now than you? Yes. Can you love other Christians that go, I'm not going to wear a mask? Can you wear Christians that go, everyone should wear a mask at all times? This is the real question. How do we love the others? Um, so let's let's go. The day is near. <clears throat> the end of it here. This is a lot, and I'm sorry. I'm kind of, and I'm sorry. I'm just dumping on you a lot of stuff. You may not agree with everything that I'm There's saying today. About. Keep loving me. I am passionate about this, and I'm not. I'm not just passionate about one side of the argument. My passion right now is really let's learn both sides. Let's learn. Let's not just believe what you're being told. But unfortunately, yeah. And unfortunately, when you find what's true and when you start to think critical, it sometimes you have to pick a side because you go, this I found truth on this side and I didn't hear. Um, that's all I'm saying. <sighs> I told you, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. The day is near. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. We can't just sleep through this. We can't just, we have to research and study and learn. Same as Paul encouraged the believers to do at that time. <coughs> because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. Thank you, Jesus. So let us, oops, excuse me. Let us put aside... There it is. The deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not carousing in drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissensions, that's divisions, not in jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. <sighs> big chapter we made it through what do you think there are going to be no, people I no i do not i hope not no. um but let us know maybe maybe you're so annoyed today and maybe this is frustrating you and you're going i can't believe he's talking about this good that is usually the first um, motivator to start thinking critically and maybe look at some different things. Look at some different news sources. Look at, go to some different sites. Go to, why do these people who believe different than me, why do they believe that? And what if we just sat and listened and actually went, okay, why do you believe that? Huh. Okay, but I can't, I can't line up with you and we can love each other even though we don't uh, believe the same thing. I, you know, and I'm not, again, I'm, I told you guys, I don't like masks, but I wear them. Um, I am not wearing a mask because I'm afraid of getting the coronavirus. My research and what I'm seeing by numbers and things is 
Um, <clears throat> most healthy people do not get it. Um, you know, there's new variants now. Oh, I know there's new variants. There's also new fear now. And I hate to say it, but news and media is, is a business and fear is their currency. No matter what side you want to listen to. Well, I only listen to these guys. They tell the truth. No, they tell you fear in a different way than the other side. These guys go, oh, fear the virus, everything, I'm so scared. These guys go, fear the other guys because they're so scary. And fear, we should not be driven and motivated by fear. So I wear a mask not because I'm afraid. I'm not afraid. God is my healer. He is my protector. Um, I'm going to wash my hands because it's smart, not because the government tells me to. I'm going to avoid contact with sick people like I have my entire life. Oh, I'm so sick. I got a cold. Cool, stand over there because I don't want it. We've done this for decades already. This isn't anything new. Um, but I wear a mask because I show respect to others. Um, I don't feel it is a huge infringement. I also don't think we should go so far as to mandate and everyone should wear a mask. I think we should go, hey, you're a grown up. Make your own decision. Mm -hmm. And if you want to wear a mask and you feel protected by that, do it. And if you don't, you are just as equally right as the person who wants to or doesn't want to. That's all. That's my thoughts. Um, again, what do you think? I need to end this. We love you guys. I'm not even going to. Should I get into comments right now? Uh, this meme just came up. Oh, a meme Ready? came up. Something is seriously wrong when the world is offended by everything but sin. Something is seriously wrong when the world is offended by everything but sin. Huge. Huge. Guys, that's it for today. I'm not going to get into comments. I will take some time though today and reply to you. And if you would like a further conversation one-on-one, -on -one, I will message you or, or let you know in the comments and say, hey, maybe we can talk about this privately. Because I think if I jump into comments right now, it's just going to keep me going on my, my passion train here. Here's the number one. Here's what this all boiled down to. Romans 12. Submit, you know, come under God's mission. Submit yourself as a living sacrifice. Number 13, keep living out under God's authority around others. And we have to obey God, not just man. But God has put people in place and they can punish us and we have to be pick our battles. And if we love, just love, just love. Put on love. Wear your love mask today we should always have it on always have on the character of jesus christ putting aside other things and can we love people genuinely love them even if they completely if we completely disagree you know on on some things especially submitting to authority right now that's what romans 13 is about goodbye <laughs> God, I'm worn out now, but I'll talk with you guys in the I'll, in the comments. I will reply to some comments. Thank you guys for being here. Um, if you're totally mad and you've unsubscribed for Bible Read Long Story, you've already you're gone. If you're here and you're going, I don't like what he said today. Keep loving me. Look at some of the other ones, and maybe you'll go, Wow, he's done three years of Bible Read Long, and we've never got into politics until today on really in depth on some of my own thoughts and beliefs. Love you guys. God bless. We will see you tomorrow as we continue and go again. <laughs>